Hey everyone, welcome to part 54 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in the last two videos, we created this inventory UI, which lists the items in the player's inventory. So now when the user selects an item by pressing Z, we should go to the party screen and we should let the player select a Pokemon on which the item should be used. So we can also go back to the item screen by pressing X and we can select a different item if we want. So yeah, we'll implement this in this video. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making this series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me and get access to the complete project files of the series. The project files also contain some advanced features that are not covered on YouTube. So let's start the video. So in the inventory UI script, if the player selects an item, then we should open the party screen and let the player select a Pokemon on which the item should be used. Right? So when the Z key is pressed from here, we should open the party screen. So the inventory UI can be in two states, either the item selection or party selection. So what I'll do is, I'll create a new enum for the inventory UI state, okay. So state can be either item selection, party selection, and I'll add another state called busy. So we'll use the state when an item is being used. And at that time, we don't want both these selections to happen. So we'll use it for that. So next, let me create an instance of the inventory UI state. I'll just call it state. And inside the handle update, this is a code for the item selection, right? So this should only be done if the state is equal to item selection. So I'll add an if condition over here. And if the status item selection, then we should execute all this code. Okay, so I'll put it inside the if condition. And otherwise, if the state is equal to party selection, then we have to write the logic for the party selection. Okay, so before we do that, we have to first open the party screen when an item is selected. So in here, if the Z key is pressed, then we have to open the party screen. So I'll create a function for that. So this will be called open party screen. And in this function, First, I'll set the state to inventory UI state dot party selection. And then we should actually enable the party screen and show it instead of showing the inventory UI. So for that, we need a reference to the party screen. So I'll create a serialized field over here. Okay. And now from here, we can enable it. So I'll say party screen dot game object dot set active true. So let's call this function when the Z key is pressed. Okay. And I'll just make this else if since we can't press both Z and X at the same time. So now we are opening the party screen. So next let's write the code for the handle party selection. So logic for the party screen selection is written inside the party screen itself. So if we go to the party screen, we have a handle update function here and it handles the selection of the party members. So from here, we just have to call 
party screen dot handle update so now this function takes two actions as the parameter so the first action is on selected and in this action we can specify what should happen when a pokemon is selected from the party screen so in our case when a pokemon is selected we should use the item on the selected pokemon right so i'll just add a comment here and we'll implement this later and next let's create the second action which is on back so this action will specify what should happen when the player goes back from the party screen by pressing x so in our case we just want to close the party screen and go back to the item selection state so i'll create a function for that i can just duplicate this function and call it close party screen so in this function we'll set the state back to item selection and we'll make the party screen inactive so i'll say set active false so now in the on back we can just call close party screen looks like we have an error here it's saying we already have an object called on back so yeah we do have that the handle update takes an action parameter called on back that will be invoked when we go back from the inventory ui so this is for the inventory ui and this is for the party screen so i'll just rename this to on back party screen so now we can just pass these two actions to the handle update function all right so now when we select an item from the inventory ui we should open up the party screen and then we should be able to select a member from the party screen so let's go to unity and test this so first we have to assign the party screen reference to the inventory ui so i'll assign it here and next we have to make sure that the party screen is below the inventory ui so this is because if it's below the inventory ui and if we enable the party screen then it will be shown over the inventory ui right so that's what we want so make sure it's below the inventory ui so now let's try testing this okay so if i select an item from here it goes to the party screen but the player's party is not shown over here and in here we can see we have a null reference exception so if we double click on that it should take us to the line that's causing the exception so the problem here is the pokemon's list is actually null because we are not setting it before we open the party screen all right so if we look at other places where we are using the party screen so in the game controller we are opening the party screen when pokemon is selected from the menu right so here you can see that while opening it we are also calling a function called set party data and passing the pokemons of the player so that it will be set inside the party screen so we can call this function from the open party screen also but i really don't want to call it every time we open the party screen that's going to be a real pain in the future so let's actually find a better way to handle this so let's look at the set party data function so this function is taking a list of pokemons and it's assigning it to the private variable that we have inside the script okay so if you think about it the party screen is only used to show the player's party right we don't need to show any other list of pokemons in the screen so to simplify this we can grab a reference to the player's party 
directly from the script instead of taking the list of Pokemons as a parameter. Okay, so how can we grab the player's party? We can use the same method we used inside the inventory UI to grab the player's inventory. So here we are calling a static function from the inventory class. So we'll create a function similar to this inside the Pokemon party class and we'll use that to get a reference to the player's party. So let's open the Pokemon party class. And in here, I'll create a new public static function. And this function is going to return a Pokemon party. And I'll call this get player party. Okay. So in here, first we have to find the player's game object. So I'll use find object of type player controller. And then from the player's object, I'll get the Pokemon party component to get the player's party. Okay. So we just have to return this. And now from the party screen script, we can easily get a reference to the player's party. So let me create an object of Pokemon party type and I'll just call this party. And from the init, I'll say party equal to Pokemon party dot get player party. Okay, so now we have the reference to the player party. So in the set party data function, we don't need this parameter. Instead, we can get the Pokemons from the player party. So here I'll say Pokemons equal to party dot Pokemons. So now the party screen will automatically get the list of Pokemons from the player party. All we have to do is call the set party data function from init and we don't have to call it from anywhere else. All right. So let's look at the references and see the other places from which set party data is called. So it's called from the battle system before opening the party screen. So we don't want that anymore and we can remove that. And then it's called from the game controller before opening the party screen. So we can also remove that. So now we don't have to set the party data every time we open the party screen. But there is one problem we need to fix. Since we are not calling the set party data every time before opening the party screen, we have to make sure that the party screen is updated every time some changes are made in the party. So for example, if the player captures a Pokemon and then if we open the party screen later, then it might not show the new Pokemon, right? The set party data is only called once in the init. So our Pokemon's list won't have the new Pokemon that we just got. So what we have to do is, whenever we change the player's party, we have to call the set party data function. Okay, so how can we do that? We can call the set party data from the Pokemon party, but that would be a bad dependency. We don't want a non UI class to have dependency with a UI class. So instead, we'll use the observer pattern here to notify the party screen when something changes in the party. So in the Pokemon party class, I'll create a new event called on updated. So in order to use action, we have to import the system namespace. So we have an event to notify the party screen. And we should invoke this event when the party is updated. Right? So right now the only place in which we are updating the party is in this function where we are adding a new Pokemon. So from here, we will invoke the on updated event. Alright, 
so next let's subscribe to this event from the party screen script so inside the init i'll subscribe to party dot on updated event and whenever this event is fired i'll call the set party data function okay so this is a much more cleaner way of implementing the party screen so now let's go to unity and test if party selection is working okay so first i'll open my inventory ui and i'll select an item from here so now we are in the party screen and we can select different members from the party all right so that's working fine and if we press x we'll go back to the inventory ui and we can change the item selection if you want and if i press z i'll go to the party screen again and i can select different pokemons from here so that's awesome the transition between inventory ui and party screen is working properly so next when we select a pokemon from here we should use the selected item on that pokemon right so using items will be covered in the next video there is a lot to cover in it and it needs an entire video but before we stop this video i'll fix a bug that we currently have so right now the item scrolling works fine but when we have less than eight items in the inventory it causes a minor bug so let me show you the issue so i'll go to my player and change my inventory size to something like six so when it's less than eight it should not scroll right so let's go ahead and test okay so we only have six items here but the down arrow is still shown so that's a bug it should only be shown if there are items that we can scroll right and if we come down it will probably show the up arrow so it's just a minor bug and we can easily fix it so if you go to the inventory ui in the handle scrolling function we only want to execute all this if there are more than eight items in the inventory right only then we should handle the scrolling so here i'll add an if condition and it will check if the slot ui list dot count which is actually the count of items in the list so if this count is less than or equal to the items in viewport count okay for us items in viewport count is actually eight so if this is true then we can simply return and we don't have to execute any of this logic all right so let's try to test this so let me open the back so now you can see both the arrows are visible so this is because handle scrolling function is not executed so these lines to set the visibility of the arrow is not executed and by default the arrows are visible so we can easily fix this by making the arrows inactive by default so let me go to the inventory ui and i'll make the up and down arrow inactive by default all right so let's test this now okay so now we don't have the up and down arrow so that bug is fixed and if we go back and change the inventory size to something greater than eight then they should appear okay so now the arrow is appearing so that issue is fixed so i'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video